Good evening, everybody. We start the agenda review session for Wednesday, February 17, 2016. <clears throat> the ordinance is on second reading, 601, the ordinance to amend a supplement revised general ordinance of the city department of Title 10, vehicles and traffic, schedule 26, no parking, certain hours, alternate parking, street cleaning program, Nielsen Street. 602, an ordinance to amend a supplement revised general ordinance of the city department of Title 10, vehicles and traffic, schedule 24, no parking at any time. Nielsen Street. 603, orders to amend the supplement to revise the orders of the City of Brunswick Title 8, Health and Safety, Special Regulations, Governing Dumpsters in Certain Zoning Districts. Ordinances on first reading, 604, in order to amend the supplement to revise the orders of the City of Brunswick Title 10, Vehicles and Traffic, Schedule 32, No Parking, Emergency Streets, Scott Street, Plum Street. 605, in order to amend supplement, revised general orders of the city of Brunswick, Title 10, vehicles and traffic, Schedule 32, no parking, emergency streets, Hamilton Street. 606, ordinance authorizing the guarantee, the guarantee by the city of New Brunswick in the county of Middlesex, State, New Jersey, of not exceeding 170 million aggregate principal amount of city guaranteed parking revenue refunding bond, Series 26 of the Parking Authority of the city of New Brunswick. Resolution 644, approve agenda 645, approve payroll 646, authorize me fund for redeemed tax sales certificates. 647, the award professional service agreement. To <coughs> Planning Consultants Incorporated for 2016 review of site plans and subdivisions, planning review, term January 1, 2016, December 31st, 2016, fair and open. 648, award professional service agreement to Delaware Rowdy Engineering Incorporated for 2016 conflict engineering for review of site plans and subdivisions, engineering review, term January 1, 2016, December 31st, 2016, fair and open. 649, approved amendment of resolution R021562, pay additional funds for January 2016 bills with Max Or Plus LTD limited prescription plan services not to exceed $6,233.93. 650, approved payment for emergency procurement and water utility. For crash truck for emergency traffic control during water main break repairs on Route 1. The Atlas Flasher and Supply Company Incorporated, not to exceed 3550 Purchase order is D85359. 51, approved amendment of resolution R121549. Reason to pay additional legal fees in the amount of 2346 to Benedict and Altman. Police Director Anthony Caputo, Caputo in the matter of Steve Middleton versus City of New Brunswick from 9,934.50 to 12,280.50. 652, approve emergency temporary appropriations for 2016. 653, it's pulled as unnecessary. 654, authorized lease of copy machines with the Department of Public Works for RICO USA Incorporated for one RICO MT 4054 SP digital copier system. Not to exceed 156 per month, commencing March 1st, 2016, and ending February 29, 2020. 48 month contract, state contract is 40467 G2075, copiers, maintenance, and supplies. 655, authorized lease of copy machine for the Division of Purchasing for RICO USA Incorporated for one RICO 3554 SP digital copier system, not to exceed 124 per month, commencing March 1st. 2016 ending February 29, 2020. It's a 48 month contract. State contract is 40467 slash G 2075. Copiers, maintenance, and supply. 656 approved amendment of resolution R 101519. Reason to pay invoices for 2015 the amount of 10,292 with Longwood Electrical and Cattle Incorporated for sanitary sewer pump station maintenance, not to exceed 10,292. Approval of this change order will constitute an increase of 20% or more of the original contract. 657, approve amendment of resolution R121517 to pay additional legal, legal fees in the amount of 2397 Benedict and Altman. For Police Director Anthony Caputo on the matter of Victor Rodriguez versus the City of New Brunswick from 16,141 <clears throat> to 18,538.50. 658, approve amendment of resolution R071554. Reason to pay invoices for sewer repairs for 2015 in the amount of $10,091.51 with BMW Construction Co. of New Jersey for equipment and labor. <coughs> Excuse me. Not to exceed $10,091.51. Approval of this change order will constitute an increase of 20% or more of the original contract. 659, authorized purchase by the police department under state contract A81348 
from Lanigan and Associates Incorporated for 24 bulletproof vests for the police department. Not to exceed 18,150. 660 approved purchase by police department under state contract A. 89850-N0003 Software License and Related Services from Dell Marketing LLP. Bradley Renewal Agreement for Software Licenses for the Police Department. Term is 12 month period commencing April 1, 2016 and ending March 31, 2017. Not to exceed 34,874.83. 661. Approved request for use of city property requested by Rutgers Project Sunshine. Location Google Park Pavilion and Track. For Wishes 5K Run, one mile fun walk to benefit local New Brunswick Children's Hospitals. The date is Sunday, March 6, 2016. The time is 8 a.m. to 12 p.m. 662 approved re request for use of city property. Requested by the United Methodist Church of New Brunswick. The location is Monument Square Park. Easter Sunrise Service, Sunday, March 27, 2016. The time is 6.30 a.m. to 7.30 a.m. 663 approved amendment of resolution R021612. Reason to pay additional legal fees in the amount of $3,249.07 to the Department Law Firm LLC for special counsel. City of New Brunswick Mar versus Marvac Construction Corporation from $30,167.69 to $33,416.76. 664 group request for use of city property requested by interdenominational. I didn't think I was going to get that. Ministerial Alliance of Greater New Brunswick and Vicinity. Location is Boyd Park for community unity event with praise singing, speakers and RWJUH health information table. The date, Saturday, August 27, 2016. The rain date is Saturday, September 10, 2016. Time, 10 a.m. to 7.30 p.m. 665, authorized tax bill for transfer overpayments on several tax and utility accounts. 666, approved request for street closing. Requested by Our Lady of Mount Carmel, Roman Catholic Church. The location, Mars Street, George Street, Livingston Avenue. Good Friday procession. Friday, March 25, 2016, 7.15 p.m. to 8.15 p.m. 667, approved request for use of city property, requested by Tree of Life Church, location War Memorial Park, religious service, Saturday, June 11, July 9, August 13, 2016, May Games, Sunday, June 12, July 10, August 14, 2016, time is 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. 668, approved request for street closing, requested by Rutgers, the State University of New Jersey, for Rutgers Day. Saturday, April 30, 2016. Location, Hamilton Street between College Avenue and George Street for Rutgers Day. Time is 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. Location, Senior Street to College Avenue to Seminary Place to Hamilton Street for the Rutgers Day Parade. Time is 9.30 a.m. to 12.15 p.m. for the parade. The police extra duty. 669, approving a member of, of Resolution R. 111509, reason to pay additional legal fees, the amount of 925 to an FDVO uh, Esquire. Special counsel for Board of Ethics hearings. From 5,829.92 to 6,754.92. 670 approved off premise raffle, 5050 at Federico's Italian Restaurant, 103 Church Street for the Brunswick Rotary Club. The date is May 10, 2016. 671 approved on premise raffle at 94 Summer Street, Somerset Street, St. Peter the Apostle Church. The date is April 15, 2016. 672 approved on premise raffle at 94 Summer Street, Somerset Street for St. Peter's Church, April 15, 2016. 673 approved on premise raffle, 94 Somerset Street, St. Peter's Church, date April 15, 2016. <coughs> Excuse me. 674 approved ABC liquor license renewal, 2015 2016. For Rabba Chantara, Chantarika, Tai Hajiya, okay. Liquor license number 1214 Sorry if I'm screwing up your name, not sorry. 675 approved award, award of contract with Ilaqua Water Technologies Incorporated for maintenance and support for the mem core membrane filtration system. 12 month period commencing February 18, 2016 and ending February 17, 2017. Specification number 49916 RFP, not to 27,000. Fair and open. 676 authorized payment for emergency procurement, public works, repair parts for snow cloud vehicles due to pending winter storm with Napa Auto Parts. Not to exceed $222. Purchase order number D8-5669. 677, approved professional service agreement with Innovative Data Solutions Incorporated, doing business as Power DMS Incorporated for proprietary software module for the police department. Term is three-year period commencing March 1st, which is ending March, uh, February 28, 2019. Not to exceed 3215 678, approve amendment of resolution R021558, reason to extend the contract for an additional 12-month period commencing 
February 19, 2016, and then February 8, 2017, the amount of $500 with Power Plus translation support that is for telephonic interpreting for the Department of Planning, Community, Community and Economic Development, not to exceed $500. 56, uh, 679, approved request for use of city sidewalk requested by Community Baptist Church of Somerset, location sidewalk in front of train station. For distribution of religious literature and clothing to the needy and homeless, dated Saturday, March 5, 2016. Rain date, Saturday, April 2, 2016. Time is 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. 680, approved all premise route for 5050 at 222 Livingston Avenue, the Aunt F. Emmeth Memorial Temple. The date is May 3, 2016. 681, approval order contractor, Warren Pro LLC for professional engineering expert services. Marvac Construction Corporation versus City of New Brunswick. Now to exceed 27,500, fair and open. 682, resolution to approve adoption of Middlesex County multi jurisdictional hazard mitigation plan for 2015. 683, approve amendment resolution R121535, reason change in allocation amounts with Middlesex County for 2016-2017 and Budget Alliance on Substance Abuse Prevention. The cash match is $9,758.50. The grant is $39,034. 684, Improvement Amendment Resolution R081538, Change Order Number 1 with Black Rock Enterprises, LLC. For Handy Street, Storm, Sewer Improvement, Specification Number 882-15, the amount is $6,581.73. Approval of this change order will not constitute an increase of 20% or more of the original contract. 685, approval of amendment of resolution R061549, change order number one credit with Dan Swazi, Swayze and Son Incorporated for 2015 traffic line scrubbing. Specification number 887-15, credit amount is 1089.64. Approval of this change order will not constitute an increase of 20% or more of the original contract. 686, approval order contract with Hatch Mountain Power LLC for 2016 miscellaneous supplemental engineering services. Specification number 901-16 RFP, not to exceed 70,000. Fair and open. Uh, items to be discussed by the council is the discussion of the city market increased proposed boundary expansion. Okay, good evening. Would the clerk please call the roll? Council member Anderson. Here. Council Member Escobar? Here. Council Vice President Fleming? Here. Council Member Garlotti? Present. Council President Eaton? Here. Please be advised that the notice required to the Open Public Meetings Act has been complied with and satisfied that the annual notice, which gave sufficient notice of the time and place and conduct of all public meetings of the Municipal Council of the City of New Brunswick has been filed with the City Clerk, has been placed on an appropriate bulletin board in the lobby of City Hall in New Brunswick, New Jersey, and has been transmitted to the official newspaper of the City of New Brunswick, namely the Home News Tribune. Please stand for the pledge of allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States. Silence for our men and women serving in our armed forces and for all those in the armed forces who lost their lives. Thank you. We have minutes from January 6, 2016. Can I get a motion on the minutes? So moved. Second. Council Member Anderson? Yes. Council Member Escobar? Yes. Council Vice President Fleming? Yes. Council Member Garlotti. Aye. Council President Egan. Yes. Ordinance is on second reading. We have 601, an ordinance to amend the supplement to the general ordinance of the city of Brunswick, Title 10, vehicles and traffic, schedule 26, no parking certain hours, open and parking, street cleaning program, Nielsen Street. Would anybody in the public like to comment on this particular ordinance? Anybody like to comment on the ordinance? Seeing none? Motion. Second. Council Member Anderson? Yes. Council Member Escobar? Yes. Council Vice President Fleming? Yes. Council Member Garlotti? Aye. Council President Egan? Yes. 602, ordinance to amend supplement to revise general ordinance of the city of Brunswick, Title 10, vehicles and traffic, Schedule 24, no parking at any time, Nielsen Street. Would anybody from the public like to speak on this particular ordinance? Anybody from the public? Seeing none? Move the ordinance. Second. Council Member Anderson? Yes. Council Member Escobar? Yes. Council Vice President Fleming? Yes. Council Member Garlotti? Aye. Council President Egan? Yes. 603, orders to amend and supplement the revised general ordinance of the city of Brunswick. Title 8, 
Health and safety, special regulations governing dumpsters in certain zoning districts. Would anybody <coughs> come to public with a comment on this particular one? Yes, sir. Good evening. Good evening, uh, Mr. Council President. My name is Charles Cradiville from New Brunswick. If you could just summarize what is changing, why this ordinance is being uh, adopted. Mr. Valenti, uh, please. Yeah, there's a piece of council. There's uh, this ordinance has two things. One, it, it corrects uh, an old ordinance which had the improper designation, the zoning designation that changed. So we're just updating it to meet the, the existing uh, zoning designations. Also, we're increasing the fee from 20 to 25 hours per dump. Okay. So uh, who is affected by this? This be all at anyone who wants a dumpster in any place in New Brunswick, or is it only so certain zones? Who will be affected by this? Uh, any, uh, essentially, uh, anyone outside of the zoning districts. The, the intent of the ordinance was to manage dumpsters at one time before they were managed. People were dropping dumpsters on the streets, leaving them unattended. So the intention is just to. Uh, we're not changing how the ordinance works. It's just all we're doing is increasing the fee from 20 to 25 hours. Otherwise, the enforcement is the same. And then they, we're just cleaning up the fact that they were old industrial zone designations and we're just reflecting the new. Okay. There's no change in the footprint of anything, just a matter of the designation. So, so it applies to every the geography in your country, <coughs> citywide? Yes. Thank you. You're welcome. Anybody else on the ordinance? Seeing none? Move the ordinance. Second. Council Member Anderson? Yes. Council Member Escobar? Yes. Council Vice President Fleming? Yes. Councilmember Garlotti. Aye. Council President Egan. Yes. Ordinances on first reading 604, the ordinance to amend supplement to revise John Lawrence of the City of Brunswick, Title 10, Vehicles and Traffic, Schedule 32. No parking, emergency street, Scott Street, Plum Street. Move the ordinance setting down March 2nd at 6 30 for public hearing, same day to be advertised. Second. Councilmember Anderson? Yes. Councilmember Escobar? Yes. Council Vice President Fleming? Yes. Council Member Garlotti? Aye. Council President Egan? Yes. 605, an ordinance to amend a supplement to revise general ordinance of the city of Brunswick, Title 10, Vehicles and Traffic, Schedule 32. No parking, emergency streets, Hamilton Street. Move the ordinance setting down March 2nd at 6 30 for public hearing, same day to be advertised. Second. Council Member Anderson? Yes. Council Member Escobar? Yes. Council Vice President Fleming? Yes. Council Member Garlotti? Aye. Council President Egan? Yes. 606, ordinance authorizing the guarantee by the City of New Brunswick in the County of Middlesex, State of New Jersey, of not exceeding 170 <coughs> aggregate principal amount of city guaranteed parking revenue refunding bonds. Series 2016 of the Parking Authority of the City of New Brunswick. Move the ordinance setting down March 2nd at 6 30 for public hearing, same day to be advertised. Second. Council Member Anderson? Yes. Council Member Escobar? Yes. Council Vice President Fleming? Yes. Council Member Garlotti? Aye. Council President Egan? Yes. We now have resolutions uh, numbers 644 to 686 with 653 being pulled. Would anybody from the public like to speak on any particular word, uh, resolution this evening? Please step up and invite the phone. Yes, sir. Good evening. Once again, Charles Cradville, New Brunswick. 648 is a uh, hiring a conflict engineer. It's my understanding the city engineer is uh, you know, not going to be returning to work. Can you give me an update on uh, the you know, recruitment of a new city engineer? Uh, it's my understanding this conflict engineer is going to end up filling in in the meantime, at the planning board and the zoning board, what's the status of hiring a full-time, you know, permanent replacement for Mr. Goulden? Mr. Lockwood? Uh, we're calling three people back for second interviews, um, and uh, I know I'm jumping from one resolution to the other, but the last resolution on your agenda... Um, with Hatchmont McDonald? With, ha with, with Hatchmont, yes, yes. Uh, provides for um, the replacement engineering services for the months of January, February, and March of this year. So we are um, hoping to have someone uh, on board by April 1st. Thank you, Mr. Lockman. Okay, and so uh, about those three people who are being interviewed, are any of them affiliated with this company, Delaware American Engineering? Not that I'm aware of. Okay, so it would be uh, like real people not hiring a company to be the engineer, be, be hiring a 
An engineer. When I'm hiring a real person engineer. We're, we're interviewing individuals. Individuals, not right. a company. Then who's real individuals. Are they real, Mr. Locker? They appear to be. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I have to ask about the lawsuit filed by uh, Stephen Middleton. Um, what number, Mr. Patterson? That's uh, 651. Can, uh, 651. Can I get an update on the status of that case? Uh, Mr. Shammy? We don't, we don't discuss any yeah. litigation, so all I could say is it's still ongoing. Discovery? Or I think it's in the discovery phase as, as far as I'm, I'm aware. Okay, who's representing the city? City's being represented by uh, Benedictine Altman. Well, that's that's Mr. Caputo. Um, City's being represented by, I believe, the office of Holman Longo, one of the GIF lawyers. I, don't I thought he was talking about 651. What are you talking about? <coughs> okay. There's, well, there's two, one attorney for the city, and, and Director Caputo gets his own attorney. Yeah, okay. Right. So, okay. Uh, the taxpayers pay for both. Um, there's an allegation in that uh, lawsuit that. Uh, Peter Mangarella used a, a, a racial slur. Um, Mr. Crowell, as you know, you're, you're barking up a wrong tree here. We can't, we, first of all, we wouldn't know what the living, we don't get those pay, that paperwork. So whatever you're saying is something you heard or whatever. And we can't speak about it. The city attorney just said it's pending litigation. So we cannot speak about that. When the trial's over, I'm sure most of it will be public record or whatever you get to attend. But, as of right now, we can't comment on it because it's pending litigation. Okay, I mean, how does the council feel about uh, someone who's been accused of that uh, being in charge of security at, the, at our school? Listen, no, no, I got it. Listen, Mr. Crowder, once again, we're not going to comment on the case or our feelings about the case, okay? Okay, I, I would just, uh, with all due respect, if I were on the council, I would want to see the litigation that was coming. And it is a matter of public record. If you want, I can send you a copy of it. Um, but I, I think you should review it, and I think you would be concerned by what you read. And I think uh, it's your duty to uh, examine all the litigation that's filed against the city. Thank, thank you. Appreciate that. So Mr. Vignolo is back on the payroll, I see, uh, representing the Ethics Board. Um, through the chair, can you please ask Councilwoman Garlotti uh, how she knows Mr. Vignola and what their relationship is? Um, Ms. Would you like to answer that? It's up to you. Well, I, 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 Mr. Crabble, uh, listen, you know, you want, you're asking questions that don't pertain to, to what the resolution says. Okay, we're talking about, if you have questions of why we're paying Mr. Vignola, that's a legitimate question. To wake it over and bring it over to Ms. Garlotti, is not acceptable. Okay. okay uh, so let's stick to the let's stick well, to the allow context. me to explain. I'd like so to know. Let's stick to the context of the of the resolution, please. Sure. Okay. So I would like to know if Mr. Vignolo is the right choice. Now the complaint, the only business before the ethics board right now is my complaint against the councilwoman. So respectfully, I'd like, in the councilwoman's own words, for her to say whether or not she knows Mr. Vignolo why, and why what their relationship. Why is that what I just said to you? You just totally, totally blew off when I just said. When I, I know. I explained to you why it's relevant. Okay, and I explained to you why it's not relevant. So either ask about so, why we're okay. paying the fee. So it's not relevant if the city's hiring an attorney with a conflict we're of interest. We're talking about the resolutions to, here. If you want to talk about it in problems. public, you want to come up in public speaking and ask about it, you're more than welcome. But let's talk about what we're doing here. We're paying a lawyer's bill. That's the, what the resolution is, right? You agree? Right. You okay, so you have, you, you have a problem with that? You have a problem with that? Uh, quite frankly, if there's a, an improper relationship and there's a conflict of interest, I do have a problem. I'd like to know. Is there a conflict of interest? Can, can you please yeah. ask your colleague to dispel well, that rumor? No, it has nothing to do with the resolution, in my opinion. Thank you. So ask another question on another resolution. Okay. Um, I think it's uh, very troubling that the, the council is being dismissive. Um, you know, the, this is... The, you should be concerned we're with that. We're not being dismissive. We're not being dismissive. You're not? I think it's very troubling that you're not sticking to what we're trying to accomplish here about the resolutions. You can come back and talk about that. It has nothing to do with what the resolution. Trying, what you're trying to accomplish, with all due respect, is to, to cut a check to, to this person. If he, he, he did work. We're going to pay him for his services. And okay? are you going to continue to have him represent the ethics board? Mr. Shammy, is he still representing the He's ethics board? He's going to represent the ethics board. The ethics board has... has selected him, and uh, by resolution of the Ethics Board, I believe, <coughs> their initial meeting this year. And just to correct something Mr. Cradwell said, 
Mr. Vignola doesn't only represent the ethics board with pending matters. Um, he also represents the ethics board with respect to a matter that's on appeal involving Mr. Cradle's complaint, um, which is now at the Office of Administrative Law, I believe. So he continues to represent um, the board on that matter, and we'll see it through to conclusion, I believe. Thank you. Thank you. I am uh, still concerned. I'll be honest, the uh, ethics board does not have a great track record. I'm glad Mr. Chammy brought it up that uh, the, uh, the case that Mr. Vignola presided over uh, is under appeal now. It's costing the taxpayers even more money and it's going to drag out for you know, more time and it could have been settled by now if uh, you had an attorney who played by the rules and conducted the hearing properly, but who you didn't chose Mr. Vignola. the appeal? I appealed, and, and oh, so you're calling us more money. You, you appealed it. I'm just holding people accountable. Oh. If the, at, at you the end of the appeal, we're costing the city more money. Can you just explain that? All right. All right. right, and I filed the complaints too. Okay. So I'm not ashamed. You're, you're not happy with the with the results. I'm not happy. You <laughs> keep hiring the same lawyer. Okay. Who Please. seems to be connected to you? He's connected to you. You. That's why he didn't. Pre, that's why he didn't preside over your case, right? He's, he's watching my little league. I was 12 and now we have some battles with Little League champions. Right. Could, could we get an attorney to represent the board that doesn't know any of the defendants? Mr. Crowder, doesn't know please, any of these people? Come on. You're, you're, I'm just saying. I, I really think you're much brighter than this. Come on. Let's go. Let's move on. Well, thank you. I'd like to also share my concern that uh, the ethics board has. Uh, you know, named a subcommittee that includes someone who Ms. Garlotti vouched for when he was appointed. Um, so this just fits a pattern. This fits a pattern of the ethics board putting people in uh, decisive, powerful positions who are connected to the people who are accused of being unethical. And it's just not, does not inspire confidence in the system. And I'd encourage you to find any other attorney, uh, preferably someone who doesn't know any of the council members or any of the people who've been accused of being unethical. That's, that's you, my Mr. two cents. Thank you. Uh, last, or next to last, I want to ask you about 675 is uh, the MemCorp uh, the filtration system, is this a new company or is this just a company that changed names? E e Director? Yes, uh, it pleases the council. It is uh, an existing company. Um, it's still a Siemens product. Um, they have evolved, changed names. It's an annual contract we go through for uh, evaluation and maintenance of the system. Okay, so there's no difference in the contract versus last year. It's the same, same. renewal. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much. And the uh, last one I want to ask about is, can I just get an explanation? 682, a uh, multi-jurisdictional hazard mitigation plan for the entire county. What does this mean for New Brunswick, and what is, what is a multi-jurisdictional hazard mitigation plan? Mr. Lachlan? I'm going to ask Director Rawls, if he's here, if not, Chris Stellatella. Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you. Chris Stellatella. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, pretty much this is a plan that has been accepted from our department if emergencies happen that you go outside the city, uh, that will work with Nelson's County to mitigate it. It's pretty true. So what kind of hazards would those be? Any type of hazards. So it could be natural, man-made, So anything from a storm to a chemical spill or something like that? Absolutely. Okay. We've and had these agreements in place for years. Okay, so uh, are there any significant changes in this, this agreement? None. Any changes? None. None. And uh, <coughs> the, the, the agreement's available, you know, presumably through the clerk's office. Is that is this something that's public? Is there something to public? That uh, this, is, this is not a public thing. This is an emergency management. Obviously, it's important that we keep that stuff. <coughs> so, if someone wanted to review the multi-jurisdictional hazard mitigation plan, they'd be denied. Uh, I don't know if that's the right word. Mr. Shammy, do we know if that? Uh, we'll look into it for you, we'll Mr. Look into it. I don't we don't have that answer right now, but we'll find out for you. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. You're welcome very much. Okay. Anybody else on the resolutions? On resolutions only, please. Yes. Come on. I have a question for you, bro. Hi. Uh, this is my first time on the City Council. Hi. Right, David, so David address, please. please. Victor, uh, 23 Division Street. Um, about. 659, it says um, order for 24 bulletproof vests for the police department. I have a question, did the police department not have 
Bulletproof vests before, are we under attack? No, no, we've always had bulletproof vests. When we hire new recruits, uh, Captain, if I'm wrong, let me know. Uh, we get uh, every every new police officer issued a new bulletproof vest. So we're getting 24 new police officers? Uh, or we're reconditioning some. There might be some old ones coming. Captain, you want to elaborate? The vest has a lifespan of five years, so every five, five years they have to be replaced. Okay. Thank you. I had it on the end. I had it on the end. There. Thank you. Anybody else on the resolutions? Seeing none? Oh, yep. Staying in 51. Still not. Anybody else? I'm abstaining from 669. Roll call, please. Can I get a motion? Oh, motion. Motion. Second. Okay. 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 Council Member Anderson? Yes. Council Member Escobar? Yes. Council Vice President Fleming? Yes. Council Member Garlotti? Aye. Council President Egan. Yes. We'll now move to the public portion of the meeting. If anybody would like to address the city council, please step up to the, I'm sorry, we're going to discuss the uh, city market, my bad. Uh, is somebody here from city market? There's a couple of board members here. And yes. Executive director. Market. I'm also here with some additional board members, Bruce Carnegie, Natalie Bazzarell, and Tracy Reggio. Okay. So we are here with regards to a proposal we submitted. Um, we would like to, um, to ask for an adjustment in the special assessment rate tiers uh, of a 2.5% increase uh, within each of the four tiers so that we can maintain and potentially expand upon current services in the downtown. Additionally, we are looking to propose the expansion of the special improvement districts to um, an area where we have received inquiries from current property owners that would like to receive some of the benefits um, in, the, in the expanded area. And I can elaborate a little bit on each if you'd like. Uh, just a little bit. Um, basically, our assessment tiers have not increased in over 17 years. Uh, with the Great Recession, um, it has led to some tax appeals, as well as decreased in rateable, um, which has declined our budget. Uh, we have several uh, programs, um, such as the Clean Team Program, uh, which is a very valuable program in the downtown, which we continually need to cut back on. Uh, in order to uh, sustain what we currently do for our mission uh, and for our stakeholders. We have also moved our office space. We have uh, made a lot of changes to our service providers in order to cut our budget. And uh, we have seen redevelopment in the downtown. We've seen numerous number of uh, residential properties pop up. So there's a, a, many more residents in the downtown. Uh, as well as um, new businesses, uh, many of which uh, take part in, in uh, the offerings that we have, which expand our, um, a lot of our programming. Um, so we are looking for an increase in, um, in our budget um, to help with the, with the services. Uh, we also are looking to expand in the area of Baird Street between Kirkpatrick and uh, North Joyce Gilmer Ave, Kirkpatrick between Baird and Albany. To what does this destination go? So I'm heading that way. Right. Okay. So from the um, post office right. down to um, uh, where the church is and then up towards Destination Dogs and then back up towards um, to, up Patterson to Spring. Kirk Patch would go all the way down to uh, Albany Street. And we've talked to several businesses, uh, property owners and businesses in that area who would like to reap some of the benefits, especially the cleaning, um, right. facade improvements, uh, awning improvement programs, and things like that. So. Yeah. That's great. So you have people that are interested in getting on board with, with the clean team. And talk about some of the other things that you guys do. And you 
gum removal, I think, right? It's uh, yes. graffiti removal. We do graffiti removal, gum removal, powder washing, uh, litter removal, which is uh, mainly by the street clean, uh, clean team uh, program, and that's daily. Right. Uh, we also do marketing and promotions. Uh, we help to advocate for the small businesses. We do um, collaborations with many other entities in town to help bring events into the downtown. Uh, such as uh, the Red River Festival, Central Joseph Jazz Festival, and the Brunswick Jazz Festival. Uh, we do um, different promotions for the retailers, such as <coughs> Restaurant Week, as well as Shop Local initiatives to help those small businesses thrive. So we have, on an ongoing basis, our budget has been flat for many years. We just can't cut it anymore. Um, we have cut as much as we can. There are several properties within downtown that are exempt from paying a special assessment. Um, and we continue to see enhancements. We see <coughs> the fern will be redeveloped. We see on Nielsen Street some new development coming in. Uh, we have over 1,498 residential units in and around the downtown. Um, so we want to make sure that those that live, work, and visit here will um, really be able to take advantage of a lot of their opportunities that we have and the promotions that we do. Thank you. Anybody have any questions? Thank you. Okay, now we we'll move to the public portion of the meeting. Step up in front of five minutes, sir. Thank you. Uh, I'm Vince Kirk, Salem 171 Nickel Avenue in New Brunswick, and I'm here uh, with a group of representatives from the Feeding New Brunswick Network. They're here. Council President and Council Members, we are here to ask that a proposed resolution recognizing the Feeding of Brunswick Network be placed on the City Council agenda to be voted on for approval. The Feeding of Brunswick Network is established to provide a means for existing food pantries and soup kitchens to coordinate their citywide activities to best meet the needs of their clients. There are individuals here representing the Feeding of Brunswick Network that will speak to how the network is benefiting the food system in New Brunswick. Before that, I would like to comment on the City Council considering not placing resolutions recognizing the, effect, the efforts of community organizations on this agenda. The question is not whether the Feeding of Brunswick Network is doing good work. It is and it has the potential to do much more. The question is, should the New Brunswick City Council make the public aware of this and other initiatives by recognition by resolution? Approving a resolution is a public acknowledgement that there are individuals and organizations working in New Brunswick to improve the quality of life of residents and promote social justice. It is also a mechanism for making the city administration aware of these efforts. Placing these types of proposed resolutions on the city council agenda and approval of these items are means of making public an acceptance by the city of the good work being done by individuals and organizations. Recognition of these efforts indicates that the city supports volunteerism. Recognition also provides an incentive for participation and increases in our organizational capacity. It would not be good policy to discourage this type of work by not even considering whether the city should acknowledge the existence of the efforts of community organizations. Denying placing these items on the city council agenda would be perceived as taking away from individuals and organizations an opportunity to benefit from an increased public awareness of their efforts. May I say that, Martin Marks? Sure. Thank you. Thank you very well. Thank you. Hi, good evening. My name is Jennifer Apostle. I'm the coordinator from the Foods Program, the County Food Bank, and I've been working with the um, Feeding New Brunswick Network since its inception. And I'd just like to share some comments with you um, as to the accomplishments of the group and why we should be recognized. Um, the network has recently expanded to include 22 food pantries by the addition of Sharon Baptist Church, which is offered to establish a food pantry distribution center in an area of New Brunswick that's not previously been served. The network members contribute, contributed to updating a provider map, working with the Voorhees Center for civic engagement. The network will also be a beneficiary of information obtained during the food assessment being done by this center, which will result in improved services. The network is seeking to work with the New Brunswick City Administration to develop an emergency food distribution plan for example, in response to severe weather, and also to be a resource for identifying unmet needs to be considered in establishing a client choice food pantry in the city. 
college students in, um, in need are an underserved in New Brunswick, and the network is seeking to work with Rutgers University and Middlesex County College to develop on-campus food pantries. Network members mentor food pantries in joining the Community Food Bank of New Jersey, enabling them to have access to food from state and federal programs. The food bank is also pursuing participating in a shared client database developed by the network. Member pantries report increased volunteerism, communication, and collaboration as a result of participation in the network. The network has now become a forum for sharing information from the foods from the food bank and for dissemination of resources provided by SNAP-Ed. The network is a means for providers to work together to solve common problems such as storage, distribution, transportation, and volunteer recruitment. Its efforts have improved the local food system by increasing access, identifying areas that are underserved, and increasing awareness of education programs. The Feeding New Brunswick Network is doing good work and should be recognized for it. Recognition by resolution justifies the existence of this community group and acknowledges that New Brunswick needs an organization that works towards best utilization of available resources to improve food security for the people of New Brunswick. Thank, Thank you. you. Would you like to sure. Thank you. I'm Susan Stevenson Martin. I'm also here to ask that the Feeding the Brunswick Network be recognized by council. Um, basically, I am the senior program coordinator for the Rutgers University SNAP Ed program for Middlesex County, and we have offered a lot of the educational programs to the food pantry clients. The network allows us to offer these programs and be involved with research and other collaborations that allow us to enhance the services at the food pantry and to the clients. It also serves as a resource for the food pantry providers to glean more opportunities within each other, to find out how to troubleshoot certain barriers, and to overcome and to find out for more opportunities that is being offered to them and other service providers like myself what can we offer to the food pantry? And ultimately, it's for the benefit of the, the New Brunswick residents and hopefully will reduce, if we will, at least at a minimum, and food insecurity at the local level. Thank you. Yep. My name is Louis Roland. I'm a member also of the uh, <clears throat> committee. Uh, I represent Ebenezer Baptist Church. The church has been in the community for over 140 years, serving the community. Uh, we've been running a soup kitchen and pantry for about 30 years now. Uh, I was tasked by the group is to <clears throat> uh, go out to the other uh, pantries and soup kitchens and find out more or less what their needs are to help out. <clears throat> so the network could help them out as well. Uh, but, but to say that since we started, there was like three or four members uh, participating in the meetings. Now we have about 100% of the pantries. And, Soup kitchens, which is about 22, 25, participating. Uh, what I'm saying is that the network is reaching out and helping the ones that are needs and helping us in the community that people that are wants to open up a soup kitchen or a pantry and all that. So our job is to help and support. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Anybody else with the food with the food network? Oh, everybody. We're going to keep it on the same topic. Okay. Yes, hi. Thank you for listening to us because we have a, a long list of people. My name is Yvette Molina. I'm Director of Community Services for Elijah's Promise. We're a nonprofit organization that provides feeding programs um, throughout the year. Um, why am I so interested in um, assisting and helping that you guys help us recognize us is that, um, right, for example, the feeding network has been around, right? But what's happened um, over the years, thanks to the New Brunswick Food Alliance, which I also took part of, or I am part of, uh, we began to see the need to expand resources, not only resources, not only feeding people, but under, help understand people what to eat and how to eat culturally appropriate, healthy, organic food. And thanks to the feeding network, we're able to, to do that in, in more ways than others. And let me give you just quick examples, because I know we, got, we, not, we don't have all day. But for example, like this promise, please, 102 meals, 102,000 meals per year. Last year we had the privilege, and I was very happy to be part of it, is that we were able to identify CSAs or, or um, uh, foods from the uh, uh, Farmers Against Hunger Coalition in New Jersey and provide more than 35 to 60 families organic fresh produce from June to October, and we were able to then share with the feeding network and other pantries in the community. 
And it was, it was huge, it was tremendous because we're in the business of not just feeding, we're in the business of empowering, we're, we're in the business of providing social justice and helping our folks understand that they have also not only the need, but that they also deserve to have quality food, organic and healthy. And we're also in the business of sharing with smaller pantries, and that's why this organization and this um, feeding network is important. We also try to not only expand resources, but we empower folks and educate them. We're able to tackle obesity, we're able to tackle hyper, um, high blood pressure, we're able to provide culturally sensitive food to a large immigrant population that's trying to understand, we're trying to understand their needs and, we're, and, and vice versa. But thank you very thank much you. if you have any questions. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, greetings, my name is Douglas Wilson. I represent Christ Church Food Pantry. Um, I'm new to New Brunswick, though I can tell you I saw Gary Brokaw play ball live, and I've dined at Greasy Tony's before the sun came up. Uh, participating in the Pantry Network has enabled me to relearn New Brunswick. Uh, the group is dynamic. There is. Uh, eclectic group of people. I had the opportunity to re meet Rutgers people, uh, representatives from the Community Food Bank of New Jersey, of course, uh, Jennifer from the MC Foods, amongst the other pantry members. Um, I've learned that we are all serving a common group, and that is New Brunswick residents. It has been rewarding to work with Rutgers interns at my pantry and to meet an AmeriCorps intern through the network. Anisha has given me a pipeline to a group of volunteers to come in with wonderful attitudes. The quid pro quo, I get students to help me unload and distribute food, and I get to help develop a social conscience in them. Um, just uh, Pantries are more than food providers. We're not just giving out a bag of food. We're a contact for neighbors in need for sources of other services. Uh, this is something that the network enables us to do. Uh, I think the council should strongly consider recognizing the group. What they are doing, what they are attempting to do, is vital to the city as a whole. Uh, thank you for your consideration. Thank you, sir. My name is Walter Mulek, and I'm the director of the St. Vincent de Paul Food Pantry here in New Brunswick. Um, I strongly suggest that you uh, accept the resolution that's being proposed. Um, at our food pantry, we, we have 1,600 registered clients. Uh, we feed them, uh, we provide them with food uh, twice a week. Uh, the benefit of the network is that we can now coordinate among all the food pantries to address needs that have been identified by parts of the group. We can sh have shared experiences, uh, so we can learn from others, from other pantries, um, successes and their failures. Uh, and the endorsement of the uh, network by the city council would be appreciated. Thank you, sir. My name is Susan Everett. I represent the food pantry at Emanuel Lutheran Church, right around the corner. Um, like always, Emanuel has always been involved in um, feeding. New Brunswick, our, we have taken a pantry that we started in a closet and we have expanded it to now feature meat, fresh vegetables. We'd like to add a lot more things. Um, the city council recognizing our group so that we can all join together um, makes it more possible to offer more food, healthier options. And like our people say, we're also offering other services adding. Um, we're also trying to add in things like diaper banks and toiletries and things that aren't covered by general food stamp stuff that people desperately need. So if the city council recognizes us, this will help tremendously in um, getting more services through the city of New Brunswick. Thank, Thank you. you. So let me just recognize you guys right now. Thank you. Thank you. If it's okay with my colleagues here, if they have any questions, I would like to ask the city attorney to put together some type of resolution acknowledging the great work of uh, the uh, TV and Brother Network. Okay. So, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well done. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else like to address the city and the Brunswick Council tonight? 
Anybody else like they dressed to council? See? Oh, someone? Yeah. Okay. Good evening, sir. Good evening, sir. My name is Xavier Franco. I live at 175 on I would like to know um, what are they going to do about the fire director down the wall? Uh, what's going on? So the fire director? Yes. Well, sir, at this time, uh, there's, a, there's a pending litigation that we cannot comment on the. Uh, are you speaking about the lawsuit that was filed? That was yes. Yeah, we, we cannot comment. Again, like we said before, there's litigation that's been filed. Uh, the city has been served. And so as of right now, it's a legal matter, and we're not able to comment. Well, who, who has the, um, the no, what, what can I ask about the investigation? What yes, about what? No one can comment on it about, about, about the laws. Well, would would you let me know about the... It's, uh, uh, when this investigation will be done. It's going to be, it's going to be a long time. It's, it, it just filed. We're, we're being see, we're, we're being sued, correct? We're being sued um, on behalf of the Green Minor uh, children for personal injuries as a result of the incident. And it is pending litigation. Litigation takes on average from 18 months to two and a half years. It may be resolved sooner or later. But unless and until uh, it's resolved, I advise yes. you not to speak Thank about you. it. Thank you. I, uh, one, one, um, one more thing I want to ask you. Sorry, take your time. Relax. Sorry. What are they going to do? Are they going to fire him or what are they going to suspend him from doing what he did? He's, you know? he's under the direction of the mayor. The mayor uh, hires a fire director. I, 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 I don't know anything. You'll have to ask the mayor's office. I got a quick question. If I yes. was if I was in that position, uh, not working for the city, but driving on the road and I and I hit those two kids, I'd be in jail. But they let him fly under the table. Uh, Again, after, uh, we just we can't have it. If I was you know if I was in that position if I was, and I'm driving on the road and I hit those kids, I'd be in jail. Or I will, you know, I'll be behind bars. I can't, I can't answer hypothetical situations, sir. Um, I got another quick question to Captain Miller. Um, sure, through the chair, yes, right over here. I would like to let you know, um, I called the police department today, and I talked to the dispatch 107. Right. I told him I need a police car. Police car comes after the lady took off. So, um... Did you get the license plate in the car? No, 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 no. I called the, the police department to tell the dispatch because a guy um, got robbed in, by my house. And so the guy took off on foot or by in a car? Walking. Walking. Okay. A lady. It was a lady that okay. she stole a tablet and is under investigation. All right. But I called the police department. They show up at the last minute after. Uh, well, what, was, what was the last time? How long did it take them to get there? Was it, was it five minutes or was it well, an hour? Or was it like ten minute? minutes or fifteen minutes after the lady took off and they ran around. They could have found the lady. Um, so you have a question? Yes. What's the question, sir? My question is, it should, it should. When you call the police, they, they, can, they, can be suspected. they the police just showed up in five seconds. They could have left two seconds earlier. I mean, you ever hear the expression? It's a matter of timing. Yes. So you know, they 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 got away before the cops got there. I mean, you know, I, I'm sure the captain will tell you they wish they got there earlier to apprehend the person. But if, you know, they they got there in three minutes and they got there in one minute. Was it you say ten minutes it took them to get there? Mm -hmm. But will captain any like any response? I don't know about the incident uh, Mr. Franco is referring to specifically, but I'll speak to him after the meeting. I'll see if I can uh, ascertain what time that it happens. Okay. I'll, I'll check to see the response time yeah. and see what's going on. Yeah, if you need Captain Miller, we'll get the information from you. And one more, one yes, more question uh, yes, about this. Uh, I would really like to know if they can, because there's a lot of robbing going on on Delian Street where I live. Yeah. There's a lot of uh, people out there stealing. I would like to know if they, if they can have more patrol around sure. here. Sure. Yeah, when you speak, when you speak especially, around. especially there's, uh, it's getting dangerous. I got yeah. robbed already at Seaman Street, yeah. and I, I already, I'm still going with the case at the Superior Court across the street uh, because two black guys grabbed me from behind and 
attacked me and broke the whole pants. They took, the detectives took a picture of it, as you can verify, you know, and Mr. I don't know if Captain Miller knows about that incident. Well, he, you can speak with him after the meeting and ask him about maybe some more police presence on where you're speaking of, and he'll give you a clue, see if he can help you out. I appreciate it, President. You got it, buddy. Thank you. Have a good night. Good service, Mr. Cradiville. Good evening once again, Charles Cradiville, New Brunswick. I want to uh, start by, uh, you know, credit where credit's due. The great work of the Feeding New Brunswick Network is uh, is really inspiring. I'm proud of the council's uh, going to recognize them. And, good to see so many people come to a council meeting for something so positive. Um, I do want to thank the city attorney for investigating the allegations I brought up at the last meeting. I received a letter from him dated February 11th, and I have some questions about it. Um, he uh, says that he reviewed a police report, or, or he cites something from a police report. Uh, I wanted to ask, uh, uh, can I? See that police report? Is that something that is public? Tell us what we're talking about here. Just a matter of joke, Mr. Cagney's? Correct. A crime on June 2nd, 2013. Mr. Yes, Mr. City Attorney. As the council well knows, I represent the council. Mr. Cradle brought up an incident that I knew nothing about at the last meeting, made some allegations uh, and accusations that I felt warranted the council's uh, insight into. And therefore, I caused uh, the matter to be looked into. As a courtesy, I provided Mr. Cradiville with a copy of the letter, just so that he would have the benefit of you all um, knowing what I learned as a result of my um, inquiry. He said thank you. He did, and I appreciate that. Um, but I'm not going to get into the nature and extent or the, or the method of my review or analysis would be cross-examined by Mr. Cradiville. That's okay. not proper. I advise my client accordingly, and as far as I'm concerned, it's the end of the matter. So, just to repeat my question, can I see the police report? Is this a public document? Is that a public document that he can obtain? You know, the 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 police report that I think he speaks of it has to deal with an investigation, which is not operable under new case law. So I believe the answer might be no. But I don't know if Mr. Cradiville has a pending open request out there. If he wants to open something, we'll respond to it as we're required to do under law. You have to file an open request. And then who decides? Well, you know that answer, right? I knew this was coming. Well, who decides? Well, well, you're right. Well, it. obviously, Mr. Katniss is our Oprah. This is, uh, you know, well, I would handle it. The deal with Mr. Katniss. It's a conflict. I, I believe Mr. Shammy will look as, into it. As as is the case, myself looking into the matter. So. Right. Okay. And so, can you tell me, is the case still open or is it closed? He said it was. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I don't know if the case is open or closed. What I do know is that it's a two and a half, practically, years since the incident occurred. June of 2013, I believe. Uh, yes, yes, we realize that. Okay. Yes, and so the weapon that was stolen from Mr. Katniss, was that ever recovered? Do we know the answer? Do you I, want to respond? I don't even want to respond. I, uh, like I said, I provided you with the information we, that I obtained. We, sir, we don't have that information, of it, Mr. Cradley. Okay. Why don't you just open it and find out if maybe your case, if you get a copy of the case? Well, listen, if, if the city wants to present me with a police report, you know, I'll sit down. Well, he just but, said that. Yeah. But, but you, you've not promised me the police report, so I'm not going to, you know, pass up my chance to ask these questions. Okay. So, uh, we're not, basically, we're not going to pass up the chance to tell you that we can't give you an answer. Okay. Yeah. Uh, well, I think you should care about this because a former police director left a loaded weapon, I believe it was loaded, in, the, uh, uh, in his car. And uh, it was stolen. He left, it, left a car parked for six hours with a weapon in it. Um, Mr. Shammy's letter, I thank him for it, and he claims that, quote, the police report indicated that the weapon was secured in the vehicle. Can you tell me how was it secured? He just told you his answer before. He's not going to respond to the questions that go back and forth with you on the police report. He said if you want to copy of the police report, you have to send it an Oprah request for the police report. And he said, I may or may not get it. So I'm just asking him about his letter. The letter is, is okay. uh, dated Go Friday. Go ahead, just ask again. Okay. So the police report indicated that the weapon was secured in the vehicle. Can you please ask the city attorney to tell us how it was secured? 
The city attorney responded before that he's not going to answer questions about the case. He said that was going to be the end of it with him answering any questions. I think that's what he said. I could be wrong. What Mr. Shammy, is that what you said? Right. Thank you. Okay, so to be clear, the city attorney refuses to say how the weapon was secured and whether or not it was secured in a legal fashion. Uh, well, however, I, you, however you want to spin it, however you want to spin it, however you want to spin it, you can spin it wherever you want. But okay. We all heard what he said. Okay, so, okay. so he refuses to say how the weapon was secured, but only says that a police report says it was, quote, secured. Doesn't say whether it complied with state law or not. Um, but uh, continuing, he says Joseph Cadmus is a retired law enforcement officer and as such is authorized to possess and carry a firearm. Now that's not 100% true. Retired police officers have to apply to the superintendent of the state police and have to be granted approval in order to, to get what's called a you know, retired officer carry <coughs> permit. Can you please ask the city attorney if he has uh, checked into whether or not Mr. Katniss did so and whether he was approved to carry a concealed weapon in the state. I'm not sure. As I indicated to the council, I'm not going to get into this back and forth with Mr. Cradival about my what really amounted to attorney-client privilege communication that I allowed as a courtesy Mr. Cradival to have a copy of. I'm not going to be cross-examined by Mr. Cradival okay. regarding the matter. As far as I'm concerned, it is what it is. The letter speaks for itself. And if Mr. Cradival wants to pontificate about his theories of impropriety or illegality, he could do so, but I'm not going to participate in it. Thank you, Mr. Shammy. Okay, so Mr. Uh, Mr. Shammy refuses to say whether or not he's looked into whether uh, his of counsel and the assistant city attorney, Joseph Katniss, uh, was even allowed to have a gun at all. He however, refuses to say, would like to say whether that, yes. he uh, did that research, whether yes. he's seen those documents. Um, can you tell me, uh, I know that Mr. Shammy wasn't the only one investigating this. I know Captain Miller might have something to say. Uh, has anyone looked into whether this gun that was stolen from the former police director was used in the commission of a crime? You mean like when it was stolen? Was yeah, it used yeah. Was, did it, you know, it has a serial number. It should okay. be in the police report. Captain Miller, would you look into that? Do you like, do I, you know I, that answer? I responded to Mr. Bradley yesterday through email, and what I responded to him is all I'm going to say on that. Okay, so Captain Miller refuses to say whether he looked into whether the former <coughs> police director's gun that was stolen was used in the commission of a crime. No one looked into it, or if they did, they're not willing to admit it. That's what he's saying. Yes. And you find that acceptable? Well, Mr. Crowder, these are all uh, litigation that was, we're not involved in the police matter. Yeah, find it acceptable. If he doesn't want to comment on it, that, that, that's his opinion. If we want to over-request it in two and a half years, you're more than likely more than fine to do that. Okay, so there's no litigation here, okay? I'm asking about public information. Um, you know, I thank Mr. Shammy for copying me on the letter, but if he doesn't want to answer for what he wrote in the letter, uh, I think you have a big problem because this letter doesn't prove anything. This letter proves that Mr. Shammy thinks that someone who he hired to work at his private law firm, and then hired to work for the city, didn't do anything wrong. I don't think Mr. Shannon should have been leading the investigation, and certainly, uh, you know, law enforcement uh, usually takes the lead in these types of things, but neither of them are going to own up to what, what they've, they've put, on, uh, put on paper here. Um, so I'll just finish by asking, uh, I noticed the parking authority director is here. Can you please ask the parking authority uh, executive director if he um, believes that the New Brunswick Housing Authority uh, parking violations that uh, were, were brought up at the last city council meeting, if those are legal or if they infringe on the, the parking authority's uh, authority. <clears throat> you know, I'm asking, am I asking here or at the parking authority meeting? Well, since he's here. Okay, Mr. Karen. Good evening. Good evening, Mr. Karen. Uh, Hello. Mr. Cradwell is asking uh, about your opinion or about the, ex the charge that the housing authority was giving for residential parking the tickets. Are you aware of this situation? Yeah, I heard about that. Uh, actually, Mr. Cradwell asked me uh, previously about this. Oh, so you wanted to bring it up again? I guess not. But um, 
you know, as I had mentioned to him, he had asked me if I knew anyone else who could write tickets other than the police and the park authority. And I answered that Rutgers University can, and they normally write them on their own property. Okay. So that's, that's my answer. Okay, and so is the city council concerned that the housing authority has been issuing illegal tickets? Um, that it, that's actually cuts yeah, into the parking authority's money. I just want to comment. Um, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. Um, Anybody else like to address the council this evening?
that is now one one lane. And I, I see how everything is looking much safer. And I'd just like to thank everyone who, uh, who, who helped out and un understood me what, what made this location danger. I was, uh, uh, let, they, they did let me know, give it a year and a half time that the county is supposed to be making, working on another plan, give it two years or so, where they told me that at a traffic <coughs> meeting. Now, uh, it's pretty hard for me to do, do, to do this next one, even though I'm in a lot of pain now, but I surely have to do it. Wow, that was the last meeting we were at, how we were talking about abandoned buildings and how I was talking about wires and t telling you how sure I would uh, never be happy with the city. Like I said, how each time that I, I, I suffer, I suffer with pain, and like where a gentleman said about the case with kids getting hurt. Like I said, I know the city never wants to pay and, 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 and anyone, but like I said, I'm not here about the pay, because like I said, I've been taken care of, but like I said, it doesn't take away the pain. But one interesting thing, normally I stay to listen to what everybody says at the meeting, where I just happened to leave early at that last meeting, and while for me to arrive at home and to find out where, wow, I couldn't sleep, I, I really couldn't sleep, it had me in tears to, to walk in front of my door, exactly what I was just <coughs> talking, to, talking to you about, wow, who's responsible in removing wa hanging wires? We, how we discussed that, you can't tell me the Lord doesn't pro provide me to have proof to prove what the city should be do, 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 should doing. That was where you said that the fire department, once they approved that it has no electricity, how you said, okay, that's where they just put the wire. But like I explained to you, just because a wire doesn't have electricity, it, it still can do damage. And like I said, the wow, to come home to my front door, and what do I see? What do I see? H hanging wires. Sure, the fire department was there. Well, sure, they, 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 uh, oh, like I said, it's really hard for me, excuse, excuse me, but like I said, wow, to be a person injured this way already, and to see it as I'm arriving, after speaking up at the meeting at my door, where from an abandoned building, I'm talking about loaded wires hanging there, I'm not putting any problem on the fire department, but wow, for them, wow, due to with no electricity, the same place that I showed you with these new boxes and all that I asked you where you said you cannot tell uh, the company how to do this, how to do this. If you have to, a person has to get permission what to do to their house to make sure it's safe. I don't see why you can't order who, any companies regarding wires, boxes to make it safe, safer. But getting back to my point where, wow, like I said, to see the fire department and have them say, oh my, that I need to call Verizon to have them come remove this wire. Like, wow, 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 wow. I, I would give you the pictures, but like I said, I would like to show, make sure the public really sees what I'm, what I'm talking about. Like I said, wires, wow, getting, getting, how, what, anybody can walk past there and get caught, caught up, choke. What, I, how I was riding a bicycle, what, how it gets, Caught in my tire, comes across my neck, and like I said, to see this at my do doorstep, the same exact, uh, the same exact situation. Like I said, excuse, excuse me, it's hard. And one reason why normally I brighten my pictures up, but I left them dark to show you anything that's black. Wow, you cannot see, you cannot see it out at at, at nighttime. But like I said, please, please, please. I mean, it's, like I said, I could, I could, couldn't. Couldn't sleep, so wow. As I came back down, came back down here to show. So, like I said, I will make sure the city does it because I hope they come up with a better job in doing something. But so that was where I rushed back down here, and that's when uh, I, I happened to catch. catch uh, like I said, excuse, excuse me. Like I said, it's hard for me. I'm in pain already, but it's still hard. That's where I. I called Mr. Uh, Mr. Thomas, our administrator, where I came down here and I showed them 
the pictures on my camera, like, wow, he couldn't believe it, too, for something to really speak about. Like I said, abandoned buildings and talking about the wires to, to where you made it like it wasn't a big situation. Even I told you it is a big situation to show right here in the alleyway what if somebody walks in the door, what now you telling me somebody can't get injured, in, injured again? And where I, where I, I, I had uh, showed it to him, uh, and this is a really hot, hot, like a good heart, where I'm glad you really understood, understood me due to where he took his own time after it, it, it's just showing him, he took his own time to come back over there to see in front of my, my house to really to, to see what I was just, just showing him, and then that was where he ordered, where he ordered the fire department to come to come back and 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 to cut the wires due to where another person's life was uh, uh, to, can get taken away or another person couldn't get in, injured from this. So I'm here from here on out. Due to where, like I said, I know the city never likes to pay anything, even though it, it, it pay, pay anybody, but it's not about that. But please, I'd like to thank you where you, how, how you took the time to really come and see that this was an original emergency, to, that where well, somebody else could have got hurt, 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 hurt again, where you they took the time to come and, and order the New Brunswick Fire Department to come back and clip these wires for the safety of, of someone else and due to where I have to show you where wow well, after okay after the fireman did click okay Verizon or whoever would notify what see my point is what they never even came to really remove anything so if he didn't order the fire department to come back to, to really not saying that they're supposed to do that they're not saying that they're supposed to do it. Wow, so what, what, why is still, still, still out there where they never came to get it? So my point to you is, I hope as of, as of this day for, forward that you, you make sure what, what, where if you're in charge of anything else in the city, believe me, make sure of something to be done when, with these hanging wires. Because like I said, a lot of much pain as I go through, what, it's been 13 years, but yes, each year, how, yes, I go for more, more pain and more, more pain. Believe me, I would never want to see anybody get hurt again. And like I said, that's why I do what I do, due to where it's like, some people may not believe it, but where, how, I know the Lord shows me things, what, so I can get pictures to show to you what's dangerous to stop someone else from getting hurt. So like I said, as of now, I hope you do with a situation like this, like I said, right in front of my do door, I hope that at this moment you can tell me what is the plan with hanging wires. We call Tom Lockwood. No, no, I, 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 don't, I don't find that it's no joke for you to even say anything. I, I, well, I don't know, as, as, listen, I, we, it's not like we don't care about the wires falling. We, we, you know, we, we told you that it's not our responsibility. We, I, I, you, you want to call me and tell me your wire's down, we call Verizon. If there's a wire down by my house, I call the company, I call the, I, I call the, the phone company or the cable company was wired down. So you're telling me you can't say nothing to Verizon or cable anyone to make sure that their property is in, in the safety of other people? I'm going to have the business administrator call me. Where, where you do that with people's houses, where what if they don't fix their sidewalk, you give them a fine, why can't if they don't keep up with their property, you can't do a fine with them or anything? Because you but the telephone poles are not our property. I know, believe me, I know whose pro pro property is. Like yeah. I said, Verizon yeah. Wire, PSNG's yeah. pole, but like I said, what, what, what can be done? Yes, can I fire? Yes. All right, Chris, you go. I'm sorry. Uh, if I could look into our procedures of how we leave wires that are not energized, I can also look at our, uh, into our reporting. Uh, back to Verizon Cable, um, PSEG, to see if we can uh, get more accountability on their side. Thank you. Very, very good. Yes, sir. The, um, the, the condition that Ms. Moore speaks of is not exaggerated. It was a mess. Um, it was a, uh, an abandoned four-family property across the street. To, so um, cable and telephone ca wires were cut from four different apartments and then dragged across the street and just laid on her sidewalk. 
Um, so I'm grateful that the, the fire department did come back out when I called and, and asked them to cut the wires from as high as they could as they hung from midair. Uh, they did uh, collect the rest of the, the wiring, which was on the uh, sidewalk partially and wrapped around the sidewalk. Um, I knew that police dispatch was asked to call Verizon and cable vision, but you knew they weren't coming out that night, so that's why I asked the fire department to come out. I appreciate their, um, their effort. Thank you. And and they, they, were able, they were able to determine that it was not a live electric yes. wire? Yeah, they had already determined that, that okay. it was not a live electric, but um, it is an issue. If this, these things happen in the middle of the night, I mean, we don't have a, um, a division that goes around uh, cutting cable and telephone wire. We don't. And I was grateful that I, had, I could rely on the, the fire department to do that. Um, so it is an, it is an issue, um, but dispatch, as I understand it, is required to call Verizon and um, uh, Cablevision for the purpose of getting their wires uh, taken down properly. And I agree with Ms. Moore. I went, I went out there the other day. There's the, the eight wires are still hanging from they're, they're 12, 15 feet in the air, but they're still hanging from well, that, up above. Well, that was the same response we gave last meeting, is that she should call up the police department or fire department. It's her responsibility, if she gets the poll number, to call up those companies and have them come out and fix the problem. And I'm sorry that the response time is a snap like that, but we, 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 we got we to keep pressing them to get out there. We'll, like the fire, the fireman said, we'll, uh, work on it. We'll, we'll work on it, take a look on how we can get a better response. Well, I, like there. I said, if, if, if you can uh, go take action with somebody else and with their property where, where it's not up to safety, how you give a fine, like I said, to someone if they don't fix their sidewalk, if you give a fine to somebody, I don't see why you can't do the same thing to step up and take action with, with the, the companies so they will take care of their property. So you want us to find the public service or cable vision when the wire falls down from the pole? And, and if, they do, if they don't come within 24, 40, I, I'm not saying the same night, but like I said, wow, in the morning they didn't even still, still we'll come. We'll have the city attorney take a look at that if we can uh, issue a fine to the utilities that don't come out in a certain matter. Because like I said, I showed you where I showed you the wires around Livingston School. And I showed you the pictures the last time, time, but what? Like I said, this is happening too much, and I hope, like I said, the city okay. does step up and do something Thank about it. Thank you, Mr. Moore. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else with the address to the council? I've got one more thing to tell you. Just one more thing. Sure. Come on. Um, this is Xavier Franco, uh, 175 Renton Avenue. I got something to tell you to the parking authority. When I went to the hospital for my baby at the hospital, Robert Johnson, right? Um, they told me I had to pay for the parking, for the parking, uh, valet parking, five dollars. Right. Which is not. When I go to St. Peter's, when I have my two other kids there, right. I never had to pay for the valet parking. Well, there's, there's so that, that's, go ahead. I would right. like to know why. We it's have not to, the parking authority. That's the hospital's choice. It's not the parking authority the running. Parking there. authority runs that. Parking deck. That's what they I. Run that's the what deck, they don't run the valet parking. It's the hospital that chooses to charge you five bucks, not 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 Mr. Kennedy. No, but my parking. my question is why? No, the, that's correct. Yeah, thank you. But my of question, course, of course it is. my question is why the parking deck is owned by the parking authority. That's my question. Why what? Why the parking deck next to the hospital is owned? Because the hospital rent spaces from the parking authority. They they, they rent they rent spaces from them. But why they're, the, they're a monthly tenant of the parking authority in uh, some in some instances. My question is why the hospital doesn't own the parking deck? If they wait a second, which deck are you talking about? The one's connected to the hospital? Yes. The Robert Johnson deck. No, 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 that's, no, no, owned no. The, that that's owned by the hospital. I'm talking about across the street from the, the Patterson Street. Like the Patterson Street. Right. Uh, what do you want to know? Why the hospital doesn't own that deck and park Does the parking the authority own it? Oh, yes. Okay. Well, it's a parking authority that develops a redevelopment area. So we own it. And it generates great revenue. But why, why do they have to give tickets to the uh, Why don't they just stop giving tickets to the residents and take all these parking permits and all this? From, it's, it's a public um, parking deck. No, 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 no. I'm, talking about, I'm talking about the high streets, you know, like people where they live. That's resident parking there, sir. Why do they have all this in, 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 in the city? You know, like you can't park or you have to get a parking permit for every time. 
Why do we have what? What do you want to know what we have? Why do we have resident parking? Yes. We have resident permit parking for the people that live in the houses there so they can get a parking spot and it's not occupied by somebody visiting the hospital. So the people that live there in the houses that have and the college students and whoever lives in the house rent is out. Anything else, sir? No, that's it, sir. Okay, thank you. Yes, Mr. Anderson. Uh, it's been a while, uh, so Mr. But back in January, Mr. Uh, James Deal and his wife uh, ran a Martin Luther King Day. He hasn't been here for us to uh, congratulate him and thank him, especially with Councilman uh, Fleming. Uh, so I just wanted to make sure that we thank him. Yes, I was at the event. It was very, very nice. A great job. Uh, it was very well done, and we haven't seen Mr. Neal since. Hope that we can scare him away with our singing. <laughs> yes, Ms. Esteban. I just want to say thank you to Dave Levins, Keith Jones, and everybody who was working um, for the that opened the Henry Guest House for the homeless. Those who were not able to go to that, just promised because they had too many to accommodate. Um, they were there all weekend. They were 24 7 in those, I mean, 24 hours in those three days. So I just want to, I don't want to leave without saying thank you. I commend you for the great work that you did. And, and I know that the guests were happy with the accommodation. So thank you. And thank you for seeing Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Anybody else? Seeing nobody, motion to adjourn. Motion. Second. Roll call. Councilmember Anderson? Yes. Councilmember Escobar? Yes. Council Vice President Fleming? Yes. Councilmember Garlotti? Aye. Council President Egan? Yes.